afternoon. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Uh, item five before you is a request to accept a grant for six hundred thousand dollars from CMS federal government to assist local residents who currently are uninsured in walking through the new enrollment system to enroll for health care as of October 1. This anticipate, well, currently we have approximately 200,000 residents who are without insurance, and it would be our goal to assist them in enrolling and to identify those individuals who may qualify that are currently being uh, assisted through the county health program to make a transfer. Um, with the background, you mentioned 22 sites. Where, where are those sites? We have several partners in this venture. We're basically, as a county, providing staff support, administrative support, and financial oversight. But our partners in this venture are JWB, the County Health Department, the Community Health Clinics, as well as St. Community College. All of those will be functioning sites that for JWB to be the Family Resource Center. Uh, for the Health Department, it will be all of their offices, plus our county locations, and St. Peter's involved, the college is involved in training uh, and facilitation of the staff to make sure everybody's going to receive a course in uh, cultural competencies for our community, so to make sure that people are uh, prepared uh, for some of the cultural challenges they may face in interpreting the law and making sure people are appropriately referred to services. So it is 22 sites that will include uh, our sites, JWB, and the health department, and uh, the health clinics, pre um, The personnel that are running this, are those in-house, or will they be new personnel? All of your Health and Human Service staff who currently serve our health clients will be certified and trained. So that as their clients come in, they'll be confident and eligible to certify them and make a referral to if they're eligible for other sources of health insurance. But all 22 of the new position are folks who are being hired from the community. Uh, they will be selected through the health department, through the state system, uh, and then they will be go through a training at the college and then they'll be dispersed throughout the community. And there's a quarterly update on training modules. So we, we're going to complement the workforce with ours. Uh, again, we're looking to uh, enroll some 16,000 people this year. Okay. And that's our minimum. So we're all over the place. Okay. Commissioner Long? Yes, thank you, Mr. Warren, for that overview. I have a few questions, which I wrote down all over the place. Okay. If you just bear with me for a minute. Do you, is there, um, my understanding is that there is a requirement by the Department of Financial Services for these navigators to be not licensed as agents, but certified by the Department of Financial Services. So are, is it your staff that's going to be ensuring that that gets done? Absolutely. That is part of our administrative oversight is to make sure everybody, it's an online training program. Um, they'll be using our facilities, but yes, people are required to, to take the course and receive certification before they can deal with the public. Okay, and then I had a question just that went into who, oh, hold on just one second. Do you know already who this project manager person is going to be? That this speaks to in the backup material. I can't find that page at the moment. But. We currently have two project managers from our office that are assigned. Uh -oh. Jay Ortega is one of our managers who currently manages our homeless assistance programs. He will be one of the supervisors responsible for orientation and, and scheduling. Uh, the other one is Ariel Ludwig. She is our what in our MIS department, and she will help with the data reporting and the training. Okay, uh, then the, the 
uh, uh, health department uh, also has management staff as well, but they're not on the schedule for payment, and nor accounting staff will participate. So I'm just sharing this with you so that you are aware, if you don't know, or maybe you already do, that the Department of Financial Services has already set up a statewide helpline, and they are giving specific information out. So I would like to ensure that our consistent. Our information is included in what they're giving to those people that call from our county so that we, they have a better understanding of how we're moving forward to put these 22 sites in place. I think that would be really important. Uh, it is, and we're, we, will, we have provided them a list of the sites, and we'll be working with our communications department to make sure that uh, we have a marketing budget for the program and we're going to be trying to get the word out as rapidly as possible. Well, I think you'll find that they can help you in uh, With the state? Yeah, because they have their offices right down the street from Absolutely. Me. And then, um, I think this is my last question. I was looking at the marketing piece that you have here, and I wondered if there was a reason why one of the major mediums for getting information out into our community is not included in here. And I'm speaking specifically about radio. Uh, I believe, and I can double check it, but I believe that's because we have been invited to interview slots and there is no money involved. I'm sorry? There's no money involved for interviews on the radio for PSA slots. Maybe there might be. And, um, okay, well, I think maybe there might be. I recognize some couple people here that might want to speak to that just so we can. Well, yeah, let's, if we have any questions right now, we'll speak. Do you have anything else, Commissioner? Uh, not at the moment, okay. but I may think of something. All right. Commissioner Lavella? Thank you. You said that um, at a minimum you would be enrolling 16,000 people this year. That's right. Isn't there, aren't there about 117,000 eligible people? Or if you look a much at, bigger number? If, um, well, the ones, <clears throat> again, there's two phases. Under the currently eligible folks who need to start their enrollment in October and be certified through the spring, we believe we're looking at about 70,000 folks who would be eligible right now under the Affordable Care Act. We're expecting uh, that there will be continued discussion uh, this year at the state level, next year if possible, uh, necessary uh, regarding the newly eligible population. When you combine the two, it's 211,000 people who are either currently eligible or would be eligible that are not insured right now. Uh, so we're not, we're, we're still serving the unemployment group that is proposed to be included in Medicaid, but that hasn't happened and couldn't happen until the new legislative session. But uh, hopefully it'll happen this year, but we believe that it will occur. It's just a matter of when, and then there will be another 100,000 or so uh, folks. Uh, the state may introduce another health care bill. We're not sure, but we're still poised and waiting. So right now, it's about 70,000, give or take. But there's other people in the community with navigational grants. Uh, we have one of the larger ones. Uh, we also received two grant, two positions for our mobile medical program. So it's 22 plus 2. And one final question. Thank you yes. very much. There, is there a way for a person to just do this on their own without an applicator? There is. A website or? There is. Uh, it is anticipated that the group that we're focused on may have complications with the digital divide, uh, the forms, the options, the tax credits. And so what the attempt is, is to make sure that there's uniform information, that people are, re the referrals are consistent, so that to the extent that we can eliminate people getting 
misdirected and or missing out and being fined. Uh, our job is just to get the information out to provide technical assistance, computer access, and, uh, and the like, and make sure they understand the options. And there is a hotline tour to the state for any clarifications. But we're expecting that, at least initially, uh, this is a group of folks who haven't had insurance before. And there are some options in there. And it's sort of like uh, when Social Security has changed, it always creates, uh, I think, up initially. And so we're, we're expecting newly insured folk might have uh, the options might be somewhat troubling. But uh, the staff will be certified. And the state uh, will be testing them and providing the service certification. So for the Commissioner Alonso's question, it is the state certifying our staff. So there won't be any inconsistencies between what we say and what they say. But I think the idea of the radio, I really, I need to get back to you on that one, because that may have been something that was for us. But okay. Would you just make sure that we have contact information to give people if they ask the question? Where, the website or phone number? Or where do they get the posters for everybody's desk? Because you're going to want to refer to calls. <laughs> so, Thank you and, very much. Uh, that's how we'll handle it. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Roach. Thank you, Mr. Um, is there a, a deadline, a date deadline on this level? I'm wondering about the acceptance of We would hope to do it today. Uh, there is the acceptance of the grant is totally at the discretion of the commission. The issues are is that we are meeting we've got to have we've only have 45 days to set up i can't authorize the expenditure of monies until there is an affirmative vote by the commission so it's about 45 days to from start to finish yeah uh, and that includes the training and the selection so there's been some steps made but no final decisions job offers background checks yeah. none of that can occur until uh, you authorize it. okay the um when we talk about the salaries, is it, is, is it intended for this to, to become permanent? No. The contract is for one year. These are temporary positions for one year. Okay, um, but my, my question is, we, we've got temporary positions, 15 of them at 30000 a year, plus 7500 for more uh, <coughs> fringe benefits, then about 12000 worth of permanent equipment we're buying. Mm -hmm. So we're not, we're not renting the computers and the scanners and all that, we're buying them outright. We're buying them outright and then they would be reassigned back to the county and okay. the completion of the program okay. for redistribution. Do we, um, we receive questions of the congressional letter, all that sort of stuff regarding all this, is that? Yes. Everybody in the nation has one. We receive over every County received every recipient received that letter and was asked to compile all the information relative to that and send it to the committee in Washington, which we are in the process of doing. We contact the Washington today, and they believe well, uh, we we're supposed to call back on Monday, but they're trying to work out an option where the uh, age of federal agency itself <coughs> would provide. Uh, the data to the subcommittee and the regional offices who stay out there. It's not predicated on answering those questions. No, it's not. You know I'm saying? We're not bound to answer those questions before we accept that. And no. That's your procedural question. I don't no. know that I'm asking. No, it's not. Okay, that's not part of it. Now, I also asked him when I sent the email out, and this was related to the other yeah. navigator sort of Navigators is a term in our industry that's pretty much substituting for case managers. The idea is it's that most residents, if given the correct information, uh, can get through the system on their own and that it might not be necessary to spend such an intense time with them. The navigators you're talking about, we also participate in that program with JWB, but that one is for the counties to
911 system. Right. So when homeless folk, families call in in distress, they'll call that number. It's funded jointly by several agencies, including the county, and that is the mechanism by which they aid people who are in distress. Okay, so and they're, they're, not, they're not associated anyway. Other than the name of case managers, this day is just navigation to the new world. Okay. Not Great. the same program. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, you mentioned the one-year uh, contract with options. What does that mean? Uh, this would be year to year? No, or I don't this think is a one-time. If I if I said with options, I missed one. Okay. It's a one-year contract. contract. What happens I have never next year? Had a federal contract. Mm -hmm. They had, yeah, they did not get the full results that was desired. They didn't extend for whatever time period where until they made their percentage. So you're authorizing a one year contract. If, in fact, at some date in the future, the, the federal government wants to extend that contract, we will come back through this process. So there, this is a one year deal. Where I'm going with it is I just want to make sure that we don't have to, and somebody may have said it, and I'll forgive me if I were being repetitive. And we don't have to then fund it from our own um, general fund no. next year. We would just no. dissolve the program. Yes, uh, these are temporary staff. They're being hired through the health department. They're being dispersed to 22 sites. There's five partners, including the right. health clinics yeah. and the community college, JWB, and the health department. So we're covering the, the, the family resource centers. So we're covering as much territory with those folks who frequent would ask these questions and who may be eligible. So we're doing it as a collaborative effort. Uh, the quickest way to get them on is through the health department, the 45 days plus the training and recruitment is time. So, uh, and we have to have a bilingual staff and the health department is in the best position to help us to do that rapidly. Any questions before we hear from the public? And then we'll uh, vote on the matter. Commissioner Rose? I, I just have one more. Yeah. It's still okay. When I look at the, the sound doing numbers here. Which number are you picking All of them. Uh, I'm not saying all the numbers, but then when I break down the salaries and what have you, what I come back to is page one where we talked about, and you mentioned it earlier, background checks, hiring, training, and supervising. Mm -hmm. That's not included in the 600000 No, it is not. So These are we have an estimate on what that's costing us out of the general fund. Four out of our standard. We uh, have two of our managers uh, uh, doing different ends, one the technology piece, the other with the coordination with the health department. I would say easily as costing us a full time staff person, and uh, that's going to put you at about $55,000 between 60 and in benefits. I'm guessing in there someplace. And that is to handle recruit, hire, train, and supervise one individual. No. The, no, the partners who are involved will be supervising those individuals on their site. The hiring, the cultural orientation will be done by the health department. The technology to train them will get certified. We'll use our office equipment. And each one of these agencies, managers, will manage those people at their facility. So we're not supervising the folks the the coalition is, and uh, it's a pretty big big coalition. So they they can handle. All the partners are owning up, so to speak, some level. Everybody has got a, a, a manager involved, sites involved, uh, the recruitment screening. Everybody's involved in making in kind contributions. Uh, every one of the health organizations believe that there is value to their to them to transfer people to health insurance. Thank you, sir. Okay, now let's hear from the public um, panelists just like our public hearing items. Hear from the folks in support first, uh, Franco Ripple. Good afternoon, Commissioners, Mr. Sure. Chairman, uh, Madam Vice Chair. Thank you for having uh, us here today. My name is Franco Ripple. I'm Director of Public Affairs for CBS Radio Tampa Bay, also a member of our Healthcare Task Force, 
And with me today are Jay Mulligan and Mark Zalis, two members of our healthcare task force who are here to answer questions but otherwise would yield their time. Um, I'm here to tell you a little bit about uh, CBS Radio and how we would like to be involved in this process. And I thank Commissioner Long for bringing up the fact that radio is not currently a part of this uh, marketing budget. Uh, we are a division of uh, the CBS Corporation. Uh, we own and operate six major radio stations in the Tampa Bay area, um, some that are very unique, including the only major Spanish language uh, FM radio station in Tampa Bay. Um, we have created a healthcare task force because we are extremely committed to making sure that Pinellas County's uh, uninsured residents get the health insurance that they need. We're extremely committed to informing and educating the public and using the power of our uh, broadcasting in order to do that. Um, I applaud your staff and, and uh, Dr. Warren for putting together a very, very good agenda item. Um, I do, however, have two concerns with the marketing portion of that budget. Um, one, first of all, is simply the size of it. It represents about 4% of the overall budget is spent on marketing. And um, as someone who is in marketing and broadcasting, I can tell you marketing is how people are going to learn about the Navigator program in the first place. It's how people are going to learn about the opportunity to get insured. Um, of course, the other part of that is that it does not include radio. Why, you may ask, does that matter? You have a lot of other great options here. If I could direct your attention to page 20 uh, of the agenda item, that is where the marketing uh, budget comes into play. There are a lot of different options here from Facebook and digital tools to cable television to print the Tampa Bay Times and other local uh, papers. However, radio has a 98% listenership across the country. It's nearly full saturation, which means all of the people you are trying to reach, the 200,000 uninsured in Pinellas County, are listening to radio. Um, I think that is a, a major factor, as well as the fact that radio has the ability to capture multiple demographics. Uh, this agenda item talks to the fact that it's trying to reach uh, varying education levels, it's trying to reach the underserved populations, low-income populations, young and old, as well as minority African American and Hispanic populations. Specifically now talking about CBS radio, our six stations have the ability to do all of that. All of our stations are demographically different. We capture um, middle-aged uh, males of high household net worth. We capture a uh, young African American population that is of a lower uh, net worth. We capture the Hispanic population, again, with the only major FM Spanish station in the Tampa Bay area. Um, it's not only what we can do online, and actually I'd like to take this moment to address Dr. Warren's uh, statement that radio is not included because there will be free advertising involved. That may be true, and I applaud her for, may I continue? Well, according to our rules, you need four other folks if you're going to go up to 10 minutes. They cannot waive their time to you. I see. Um, why don't you wrap it up quickly yes, and see if we have any questions. Okay, thank you. Um, the, specifically with public service programming and public affairs and PSAs, uh, for CBS Radio, I produce and host our weekly public affairs show and coordinate all our PSAs. And I can tell you, as proud of I am, as uh, as proud as I am of that, the show runs 6 a.m. Saturdays and Sundays. The PSAs are typically put in overnight slots. What this means is people are not going to be able to hear this information if it's delivered in that extremely limited medium. We have and would like to deliver your information to people on air all throughout the day at different times, live mentions, live commercials online. We have some extremely targeted digital options, the ability to retarget and geotarget. We also have some great on-site ways to reach out to people at access points broadcasting live from those. So I'm going to need to stop you right there because if I set a precedent, I'm going to be here all night. Yes, sir. If there's any questions from the commission, I'd be happy to answer those. Okay. Any questions Thank for you. Mr. Ruffin? Commissioner Justin? Thank you. I'll give you a, a chance. Talking about our limited budget that we have for advertising, in your ideal situation, knowing that it's what is the message mode and frequency? Uh, what's our frequency that we would have to do to, to be effective? In other words, how much money would you have to really spend to make it worthwhile? That's an excellent question, and specifically with radio, I don't know what the dollar amount would be, but I have thought, and I apologize that I haven't talked to you all previously about this. I just learned about this today, so we moved our schedules around to be here and talk about this now. Um, without being able to put a specific dollar number, one thing I thought about is, is this. There are many other organizations that are also involved in higher navigators. USF has gotten uh, $4 million, more than $4 million, which is more than half of the state of Florida's $8 million total. My point in this is, uh, it's in my opinion that you could possibly reduce 
the number of FTE navigators and fringe benefits in order to increase the marketing budget. If you eliminated one to two navigators, it would save you $37,500 to $75,000, which frankly, you could use to increase the marketing budget for all the meetings. For example, you have Facebook here at $500. At a $1 cost per click rate, you're not reaching very many people there. So I would encourage the commission to consider the fact that there are many other organizations doing exactly this, bringing this information to people with navigators. So consider eliminating a few FTEs and consider increasing your marketing budget. Again, not just to include radio, but for all of the mediums. Does that answer your question, Commissioner? Thank you. Any other questions? Are you um, recommending paid media, or are you uh, saying you would, uh, this would be PSAs, this would be free? That's a very good question. I would certainly, as our public affairs director who oversees public affairs programming, I would certainly include some of that free media. PSAs across all six of our stations, English and Spanish, as well as interviews with all interested parties on our public affairs program. However, I do think in order to reach the kind of frequency that you would need so that people understand throughout all day parts, so you're talking about morning drive, well, afternoon drive. Both, right? The yeah. answer is certainly both, okay. yes sir. I'm going to suggest you talk to our administrator and Ms. Warren. Um, you got a promotion to doctor, but... I, I know. I'm... Are you a doctor? <laughs> he says I am. Okay, so now you are. I'm really good at this. Speak with our staff on this and, and see um, what y'all... I gave him my card. Okay, we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, your colleagues did not wish to speak <laughs> under their time? I'll work on it. Okay. Yes. Thank you all. Thank you. Um, now we'll hear from folks in opposition. Um, Ms. Regina Brown will be speaking for herself, Marie Hardman, Nancy Davis, Donna Norman, and Barb Hazelden. Uh, Ms. Brown, you have 10 minutes total. My husband would like me to tell you I'm Mrs. Brown. Ms. Ms. Mrs. That covers everything. I'm Mrs. Brown. Thank okay. It's, that's on the <laughs> My record. husband kind of likes that. When, you know, when people call me Miss, you know, he's Mrs. Brown, he's like, please, please proceed. He hears that Miss. We got you. Uh, thank you very much for your time. And uh, I, I'm not really in favor of this form for this. I tried to begin a dialogue on this through email. I was promised a response from Commissioner uh, Maroney and, and Chairman Welch. I did not get a response to my email. Uh, we did not, um, the general public did not know about this, and I didn't know about this. I came across it at Hampton Stance when I was uh, downloading information on the Obamacare <clears throat> and the healthcare navigators. And lo and behold, on that list was Pinellas County Board of County Commissioners, and on that most recent list, this is the only board, the only county board in the nation that is getting a grant for this money. And, and, and in addition to that, this money, this grant money, um, and, and part of my questions was how's it going to be used, but we'll get into that, is, uh, appears to be circumventing what our state legislator already put a kibosh to, and that was put, uh, a program to put people into the exchange, into uh, Obamacare. So because I have a tendency to bunny trail, I am going to read this. And then I'm going to come back to some questions that were raised because when I, I sent the email and I asked, I sent the questions, y'all y'all got it, right? right? I got a read receipt, I didn't get any response. So well, you did get my response. Uh, yeah, right? that someone was going to get back to right. me. Right, you had a number of questions, so staff is compiling. Well, here, here's the answer right here. Okay, Okay, so when I got the agenda items, uh, because I, I'm not really one to sit and wait, all right, so I went and looked. And, and when this agenda item was published, I printed that and I got an answer to a number of my questions, but we'll come back to it. But I will just start at the beginning here with my questions. Is there a need for this grant and how is it determined? That's somewhat answered in there that, that if we had a dialogue going instead of me just speaking to people and then having to sit down and shut up, we could discuss that. Uh, has it been accepted? I found out that that's what this is for today. Who's getting it? How will the funds be used? Uh, specifically, we've got a generic answer here, and, and the answer is, you know, we're going to use it to put, uh, put, educate people and put them in a health care program. What health care program? Obamacare. Are they going to be introduced to every health care program out there? So we, I would like a specific answer on that. And has a system uh, in the grant on the navigator, there were some things that you said 
I'll bet you we're going to do with the money. That's why you ask why the board asked for the money, and they said we we're going to do this. And they said they would um, provide education, information, information services, and work to facilitate enrollment in qualified health plans or other programs, primarily to uninsured residents of Pinellas County. Again, I want to, you know, is it Obamacare? Or are these navigators going to really educate the public that's coming across to them on all of the health care options available to them? Because I'm a, a licensed uh, life and health insurance agent, and I know that if I'm going to put somebody in a proper plan, it's going to take more than a one-page questionnaire for me to put that person in a proper plan. What do I have to know about them? I have to know their goals. I have to know their income. I have to know all sorts of things about them that really is not just addressed on a questionnaire. So if this is just to shove them into Obamacare, that's one thing, and it's we're circumventing what the state already said no to. So those were the questions I sent, and, and, and what would determine a qualified health care plan? Then I did, uh, downloaded an information piece on navigators. Navigators need not be licensed. Do you know what a licensed health insurance agent has to do to deal with the public on, on health insurance? We have to continually have education every year. We have to have E&O insurance because what happens if we make a mistake? What happens if we give them incorrect information? What happens when their family says, you didn't tell them this? They get sued. Do you understand that you, as the county board right now, are responsible for the mistakes that could be made out there with these navigators and their little online certified program? Because one of the questions in this navigator program is, bottom line, what happens when people make mistakes? People make mistakes. You know, I remember the biggest, worst financial mistake I made with the client. I will never forget that mistake over 20 years ago. And people make mistakes. And um, the information on the navigator said, well, of course the consumer must be made whole. I'm sure every one of you would say the consumer must be made whole. Now, you can adopt the California method, which says the consumer gets made whole by the individual navigator. Oh, really? Really? You're going to go out there and hire somebody that's never done this before? And and pay them $30,000 a year, and then they're going to make the, the consumer home? I don't think so. Okay, navigators are to distribute fair, impartial information about enrollment in qualified plans. Who determines fair and impartial? Do I get to determine that? Or is it the individual sitting there in front of them? There's currently no established standards for the navigator program. The states do it themselves. Okay, and we all know that on the federal level, Sebelius has it, you know, the half of human services, that is so up in the air with not, you know, we don't know yet, we don't know yet, we don't know yet. Training and competency exams is, is what they're going to get. What if a navigator makes a mistake? Who makes them whole? Right now it's you guys. Oh well, us guys, all of us, Pinellas County taxpayers, the homeowners in Pinellas County. First, it must be determined of what is a qualified health plan. Again, I think we all know this is an Obamacare program. This is to push people into the exchanges. How do we? How does a, a navigator determine the best plan? The navigators will explain to participants health plans and the differences between the options, and the cons to, so the participants will fully understand what they're getting into. I don't know how they're going to do that, and we are the ones that will be responsible. To accomplish the role of a navigator, that the stated role of what we want to do here with these people, with the people who are insured, the navigator must be experienced in health insurance programs, and I would say be an expert in it. They must be an expert in accounting because they have to determine if they qualify tax-wise and what tax credits are available to them. Can anybody here today answer that question? No. Can anybody in the country answer that question? A lot of us are asking. They uh, must be good at public relations because they also then have to resolve any differences of opinions and, and misunderstandings that go on there, according to the plan. And they must be bilingual. Okay, these people are, these are going to be amazing people you're going to go and get right off the street. And again, come back to what happens if they make mistakes. I'll take my last few minutes to, I did pretty good. I'm never going to, I'm not going to get to that stuff. We really need to increase this 10-minute thing. Um, 
I oppose the acceptance and use of these funds in the manner described in, rec in the recommendation presented here today. For the reasons I submitted, there are just way too many unanswered questions. When working to pass the Affordable Care Act, then Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi told us all that we must pass the bill to know what's in it. Well, they passed it, and we have found out much about it. And what we have found out about it has made much of America turn against it. As of right now, when I left the House, there were 1.1 million Americans that had signed a petition to either modify, repeal, or defund this um, open-ended, nondescript program. Even the supporters of this legislation are asking and receiving exemptions. Uh, here's a Washington Examiner article right here today where the White House is working with the union so they could be exempt, and we want somebody to that doesn't know anything about it yet to come in here and put people in it. The bill did pass, and it became law, and we still don't know much of what is in it. Plans, programs, regulations, and details surrounding the eminent launch are still unknown. I'll close with this, a quote from Senator Rubio. Until critical questions can be answered regarding the availability and type of health insurance to be provided by Obamacare, it is unconscionable to spend taxpayer dollars to promote and advertise Obamacare plans that have yet to be finalized. While the administration should be abandoning this disastrous law, instead it is imprudently and blindly promoting poor policies that will harm Americans and American businesses and misappropriating public funds in an effort to sell bad ideas to good people. I have 39 seconds left and I am going to take it because you ask about a project manager and I'm glad you did because that's one of my questions. Because the project manager, I went through a list of this, because I figured right off the bat <coughs> that project manager's not in the budget, not in that $600,000 budget. There's no money for him. So he has to be coming out of our already available staff. And there is one, two, three, four, five, nine things the project manager must be accountable for. Like she said, it's a full-time employee. We're giving it up to push, and he has to be responsible for, for the, he is another layer. The people out there at the 22 locations, they have staff. Now he's responsible for those leaders. Thank you very much for your time. May I enter something into the record? Yes, Mr. Clerk. The clerk is on his side. God bless you. Thank you.